Hello, I hope you're doing well. Today I want to take a few moments to show you how you can place some live market orders using your own Python code, as this is really a fundamental step when creating a trading bot. I will notably use this wonderful library that is CCXT for that, and I'll use the KuCoin exchange. This video is separated into two parts. The first is a warm up where I show you how to use this library to download information on your favorite coin and then to do a chart plot. And the second is where I show you how to place those live market orders. And therefore I walk you through the process of linking your code with the exchange through the creation of an API key. All the codes that I will be presenting are free for you to use and can be downloaded from our GitHub. You have the information in the description below. Enjoy. When you want to make your trading more automatic using a code, you will need to use the API of the exchange that you're dealing with. The API, if you want, is the library that allows your code to dialogue with the exchange and your account there. So if you want to use several exchanges, then you will have to learn the APIs of all of these exchanges. And that can be quite cumbersome. Well, CCXT is there to help you. CCXT stands for Cryptocurrency Exchange Trading Library. And in that sense, it is a sort of meta API where this library encapsulates under the same syntax structure and framework, the APIs of many exchanges you can see the list here is very long. So if you learn how to use this official library, you will not need to know all the details about each APIs of each exchanges. Most often you will just end up changing a keyword to choose what exchange you're using. So you can see that this can really make your life easier. And that is why I chose to use this library for this little tutorial. Let's start with our warm up where we're going to use CCXT to download the data on a coin and then make a little chart plot. I'm using a notebook for this. The first cell is where we install virtually the packages and quite naturally you can see that the first one that I'm installing is CCXT. The next one that I'm going to be using is time. This is to convert some dates and times. I'll get into that in a little moment. As usual, we're using pandas to process and shape our data. And finally, NPL Finance is the library that I'm going to use to do the candle plot. So to run it, you click here, but I've already done that so we can move to the second cell. The second cell is where we actually import those packages that we've installed virtually. So let me run it. And finally, we get to the first important part where we're using the CCXT library. You can see here that I define a variable called exchange, which is equal to CCXT.KuCoin. That's because I'm using the KuCoin exchange. I've been quite fond of that exchange lately. If you wanted to, you could use Binance or, or, or any of the other exchanges that are supported by CCXT that you can find on the page I presented earlier. So the first function of CCXT that I want to highlight is this load markets which will return all the information about all the markets that you can find on KuCoin. So let's run it and see what happens. And there we go. You can see that you get heaps of information on many coins and their values and a lot of details that you might need when you're studying a st strategy. Maybe more relevant for us is just to find what symbols you can trade on this exchange. So let's just run that second function, which is exchange.symbols. And there we go. We see all the possible pairs that you can trade on the KuCoin exchange. Next, so as I said, we are going to download some OHLCV data, which stands for open, high, low, close volume data, the standard data that characterizes an asset. For that, we need to define what asset we're going to look into. So I decided for this example, we're going to use the ETH USDT pair, but of course you can change that. The resolution is what a, is the time frame. So we'll be working on a one day chart. And of course, this is something you can change as well. And the same for the starting date. I decided to look at the data at the beginning of September this year, but you could change that if you wanted to. These are information that are going to be plugged in this function called fetch OHLCV, which is this important function of CCXT. And you can see that you plug in the characteristics of your asset in there. But before that, so let me run this, I forgot. So we've defined those quantities and now we can move to this cell. 
here you can see a, some conversions of time. This is of dates and time. This is maybe the most um, technical part of this little tutorial. What you have to understand, which is a bit subtle, is that this function here, fetch OHLCV, wouldn't work with a date that is written as we have here in this format, which is quite intelligible for us, but is actually not for the exchange. Exchanges like to work in dates that are in seconds or milliseconds. So that's where this time library comes into play. So this first line here in this cell is to convert this date into a structure that time works with, which is a, this time.struct time. So there's no need to understand all the specifics about this. It's just to tell him what I'm feeding you as starting date is a date that is in the format of day, then followed by month, followed by year. And this line converts that into this time struct time, and then we can start converting this into milliseconds. And that's what this second line does. Now it says, take this date that was converted into a struct time, and now convert it into seconds. Then the KuCoin exchange likes to work in milliseconds and not seconds. That's why I do starting date times a thousand here. And now this date is actually processed as we want, and we can use this function properly. So let's run it and we can see what happens. And there we go. The data has been downloaded. You can see that it is in the form of a list of list where you will guess, you can guess that this first thing is a timestamp. Then you will have the open, high, low, close, and then finally volume. But I think we can spend a bit of time to process that and make it a bit more understandable. That's what the next cell is for. That's where I'm using Pandas data frame and I'm converting, I'm doing some transformation to change the index to make the timestamp now on the contrary to transform it into a intelligible date for presentation purposes. And I'm also converting those values in there that were actually strings into numerical numbers. This is what this cell does. I don't want to detail that too much. In one of our previous videos, I'll put a link in the description down below. I detail pedagogically the processing of this data frame, etc., and I explain those functions and why we use them. So please refer to that if you need. Let's for now run it and see what comes out of it. There we go. Now the same information is just presented a bit more nicely into a pandas data frame where our first column is the timestamp. And remember, we decided to work with a one day time frame. And therefore, that's why we see that each row of our data is corresponds to one day. And then we have our open, high, low, close volume information. So I can now use this data frame to plug it into this MPF function. And that's the where the MPL finance library comes into play. So you see I plugged in my data in here. Then you can do with this library several types of plots. I'm going for a candle plot. In the same manner, you can also choose a different style on how the plot looks. And I'm going for the Binance one. Then I'm giving a title that is the coin name, the, the pair, telling him that the Y label that's going to be printed is price. And then let's actually look at what comes out of it. And I'll tell you about the rest. So you can see the plot appeared and I gave the Y label price. That's why I have a price here. What I want to actually draw your attention to is that as I did this plot is actually the volume plot that came by itself. And that's a functionality of this plotting library is because I put volume equal true here. I had two plots at once. The first is the evolution of the price. And then the one below is the volume. And you can see our candles with the open, close, low and high data represented here. If you didn't want to show this plot, you can just delete this line or comment it and then we can run it again. And you can see now that we have only the price plot. In the same way, there's the functionality of adding simple moving averages. So these are trend indicators. If you don't know too much about them, I've made a video recently where I go over the fundamentals about them. I'll leave a link in the description as well. So what I wanted to say is that just by showing this, I'm adding two curves, which are two simple moving averages, one of five day, because we're working with a day time frame and a 10 day moving average. And you see them both here. This is a good time to ask you to click on that like button if you are enjoying this video. Now we can move on to the second part of this video, the most interesting one, where we're going to use our code to place some live market orders. Let's install CCXT. I'm then going to import it. And now we can set up the exchange. 
in the previous part where we just downloaded data, there was no need to link our account with our code on the exchange that we're looking into. In other words, there was no need to put an API key, etc. We were just downloading data, nothing interactive between our real account and our code. But now this is different. We're going to use this code to place market orders on our account. So we need to link that. And that means we need to link it through an API key. If you don't have an account with KuCoin yet, you can use the link in the description below. It will help you reduce your fees, which is not negligible and also supports this channel. So this first cell is just to show you if you don't know exactly what you needed to provide for all of this to happen by using this CCXE function, which is called required credentials, it will tell you what you need. So you see that for KuCoin, we need an API key, the secret key, and we will need a password. And then therefore we have to create this authentication variable, which contains all of this information. So let's go to KuCoin and do that together. So you would come up here and then go to API management. So I'm clicking here and we will then go to create API. Note that we're dealing with spot trading and not futures. Just make sure that you're on spot. So we're clicking on create API. So we must give the name. So let's put test an API passphrase. That's the password I mentioned that we need to give. I'm going to write robot traders are the best, of course. Then what are we going to allow to happen through this API key? We're only going to go for trade. We're not going to do any transfers. Then you can add an extra layer of protection by restricting your AP address. I'd recommend you to do that. But for this example today, I'm not going to do it. So then we click next, and then you will have to go through a series of verifications. Once you've done all that and notably finished by activating a link through your email, you will get to this page where now we have the information we're looking for. Now I must caution you, obviously this is secret information. You should never give that to a third party as they will be able to access your account freely. But for the example today, I want to show you, I wanted to walk you through the whole process. So that's why we're doing all of this together. But obviously I will delete that API key once I'm finished. So, okay, let's copy the key here and then go to our code and simply paste it in API key. Then we do the same with the secret key. There we go. Then I need to give the passphrase, which was robot traders are the best. And then we come back here and confirm. We can now do our authentication like this. So everything went through, great. So the coin I'm going to work with is for this example, do my, to do my orders is going to be the KCS, which is the native coin of the KuCoin exchange. I just want to mention while we're around here that if you came here and click there, you would come to this window and you can see that I've activated this feature, which is to pay my trading fees in KCS. That's why it's nice to have a bit of KCS in your account as this will reduce your fees by 0.02%, which might not look like a lot, but if you're trading regularly, this will be a will be a nice difference. And also remember, if you use the link that I've provided you, you will have some extra deduction on your fees. Okay, back to our code. So I'm defining the pair KCS USDT as the coin I'm going to trade. Next, we must check the balances in our account to see if we can do the trades or not. That's why I'm introducing this fetch balance. This is an important function of CCXT. This would return a big dictionary with a lot of information. I'm choosing just to highlight the USDT information and KCS. So let's go and see what happens. And a mistake appeared. KuCoin invalid KCS API phrase. Okay, what did I do wrong? Oh, robot traders. So I need to put an extra T here. Okay, let's see now. Great, perfect. So we have several information here. You'll notice that I have about almost 10 USDT on the account and practically no KCS. This is on your trading account on KuCoin, not your main account. You can see, however, that there, there is a separation between free and used. This is simply, this would highlight if you had, for example, trading boss going on, etc. These would be locked funds if you want. So they would appear in used and the free is what we can actually trade with. Great. Now this function fetch ticker is to return the prices information volume of your asset currently. The current timestamp is that one. 
and you can see that you have several prices so the low high bid ask etc that's important information we need to have and now we can use that to do our buy order so first of all as i said i'm going to do a market order but that could be limit if you wanted to often when you're doing trading bots you will go for market orders because you want them to execute straight away when the signal appears i'm giving also the side this is going to be a, a buy so to place the order we're using this create order function and that's where i gave the information that is going to be a buy and it's going to be a market. This is a general function. You could use it to do limit orders as well. And I thought it was important to give you the general function, but you could use this create market buy order directly if you wanted to. Now in this function, the amount that you ask for is in the coin. So in KCS for us, but I don't want to buy in terms of KCS. I want to buy a certain amount of KCS in USDT. So I want to convert. A common convention in trading is to evaluate the current price of your asset by doing the average between the ask price and the bid price. So you see that's where it was important to use the fetch ticker. And then I want to buy for about 5 USDT of KCS. So that's why the amount that I'm choosing is 5 divided by this current price. Note that when you're doing a market order, the execution price of your order will be at the ask. But note that in between the time you will place this order and that it will actually execute, there will be a difference and that is what we call slippage. Okay, let's run our order and see what happens. Great, the order has been placed. You have the information here. Let's look at how our account changed. And there we go. We have now no longer about almost 10 USDT. We have about four. And instead we have now almost half of a KCS. We can check if that coincides properly with our account. So we could just come here, come to the wallet section and go to trading account. And indeed it coincides on the trading account at the moment. I have almost half of a KCS and almost five USDT, which is exactly what we have here. All good. Okay. Now we can move on to the sell order. Let's just imagine that we want to sell back the KCS that we bought. So I'm just going to copy this amount here and paste it there. You can see that I'm using the same function, but, the, but this time the side at which the trade is going is a cell. In the same manner, note that you, we could have used this more direct function called create market cell order. And the price at which a cell market order is executed is bid. Let's run that and see what happens. The order went fine and we can check our balances. How did, how did they go? Well, indeed, we almost went back to the amount that we had at the beginning in USDT. Note that because we did trades, some of the money were converted into trading fees to the exchange. So the numbers wouldn't add up, add up exactly because of that. And we have now also almost zero KCS. Okay, I think this just about wraps it up. This was Louis at Robot Traders. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it will be helpful for you in the future. If you have, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to the channel. Don't hesitate to drop your questions or comments in the section below, or feel free to join our community Discord. It is important for us to be able to exchange and share. Come check us out on Twitter as well, if you feel like it. Until next time, take care.